So, 2020, am I right? <laughs> Well, hello there, and welcome to my little corner of YouTube. My name is Holly, and I like to talk about various topics from a midlife perspective. In all my life, I've never experienced a year like that. I mean, there's been tragic events and world events and things that have happened in the past, in my experience, but never all in one freaking year. Each month, it escalated to the point where I stopped saying, hey, it can't get any worse, right? <laughs> yeah, sorry. So this leads me to the number one thing that I learned. There are amazing things that happen in life and there are horrible things that happen in life. But what the meaning of life is, is those mundane day-to-day -day things that happen in between those events or take some time to stop and smell the roses. In 2019, I had made a decision to do a career change. I had been working in retail management for about a decade and I was starting to see the writing on the wall with the change of e-commerce and the way things were going. Brick and mortar was no longer going to be a driving force in how we purchase things anymore. Therefore, uh, my job description had started to become less of what I loved doing and more of what I didn't really like about the job. So career change it was for me. So I decided to take that leap into the travel industry, into the airlines. Yeah. It was a dream job with a company that I had wanted to work for for years. It was still customer service and I was super excited when I did obtain a position there. The corporate culture was amazing. The, the pay was good. Uh, the perks and benefits were awesome, which I never got to use because I was laid off in April because of, you know, the global pandemic that grounded all the planes. So I went from an incredible high, an amazing thing that happened in my life, to a devastating crushing blow in the matter of months. It was a little hard to take. It was hard to take. So after I was laid off, um, we, we essentially took what was called a leave of absence, a work shortage leave of absence. And that meant that we were still on the payroll, we still had our benefits, we were still a part of the company. Um, but we, there was no work for us, so we went home and participated in training and webinars, all that stuff. So I was still very connected to the company. So I still felt like I had a job. Fast forward a couple months after that, uh, when everything didn't get any better, and then it was, the job is done. It's no more. It was a pretty crushing blow, and I ended up not taking it very well and floating for a bit there, and being caught up in the amazing high and then the crushing blow. And I'd forgotten about the beauty of the day-to-day. -day. And that is what pulled me out of that and got me moving again into the next phase. What was the next phase gonna be? The day-to-day -day was taking walks, just feeling the warmth of the sunshine, listening to the birds, taking a moment to stop and smell the roses and focus on the, the true meaning of life. What happens day to day. And that was very helpful in making sure that I didn't truly go into the downy dumps, which I can tend to do. So that leads me to number two that I learned. When life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. It's all about perspective. When life hands you a big old pile of crap, sometimes you have to do something with that crap and the best use for crap is to mature it and turn it into manure so funnily enough I started a garden and 
we started to grow things, little tomatoes and the usual gardeny stuff. And each day going out, maintaining the plants, making sure they had enough water, all of that gave me focus again. And that helped me through a lot of the kind of the darker days. So the number three thing that I relearned was communication is key. So for a bit there, I did kind of shut down and I did stop talking um, to friends, to family members, to the people that mattered to me the most because I just didn't want to talk about it anymore. I am a huge introvert and I've always known this about myself. I need to regain my energy from being away from people. It's not that I don't like being around people. I love being around people. It's just to replenish my energy, I need some time away. I need some alone time. I was getting way too much alone time. And I am a professional introvert and I was starting to work on my master's degree on becoming a hermit. Seriously, there were weeks that where I didn't leave the house and there were days where I didn't leave my bedroom. And that was perfectly fine. It was very comfortable. It's nice and warm. And I had my coffee and I had my phone and I had my books. So I needed to break out of that and fast. I don't know about you, but when I get into that mindset, I tend to get more into my own head and into my own thoughts. And amidst all of this during the pandemic and what was going on in the world and the murder hornets and the Australia fires and all of that stuff started to become a little bit overwhelming. And there was a moment there where I went out for groceries and there wasn't any milk or meat or anything on the shelves and that started feeling very apocalyptic to me. So why would I want to leave my bedroom when that craziness was going on out there, right? So I started going into my head, my thoughts started festering, and I started to spiral into not a great place um, most days. There were days that I could pull myself out of it and I would be okay, but there were days where my, my mind would just start to fester. I don't know about you, but it's very hard to pull yourself out of that when you're by yourself. You do need to communicate that to people and you do need to have someone close to you um, give you a kick in the ass every now and again. Seriously. I do have a few wonderful, beautiful, amazing friends. And if you're watching this, thank you so much. You know who you are uh, that would message me or get me out for a walk or um, just Facebook video message uh, to just be there and be a touch point out in the universe away from myself. And that was incredibly helpful for me and love you so much. Thank you. Um, also, my life partner, he, uh, he knows me better than anyone in the world. He started to take, no, I'm fine, not for an answer anymore. And then finally, everything started pouring out. Once I opened those lines of communication, everything started to feel easier because it was out in the world. It wasn't up in my head. That made all the difference in making sure that we I was going to be okay. And I relearned that lesson. Communication is key. So that comes to my lesson relearned number four. Work smarter, not harder. Or also known as why dig with a spoon when you can go find a shovel. So there's a term called make work or busy work. Uh, my hubby likes to call it a self-licking ice cream cone, which I didn't understand until just recently. Light bulb moment for me. Yeah, I know. So during the period where I was looking for new employment, I kept doing the same things over and over and over again, and I wasn't getting any results. So my first train of thought was to just keep pushing harder and keep doing the same thing over and over again because I would eventually get results because that's what got me results in the past. This was, what did they call it? Unprecedented times, new normal. It reminded me that 
because everything's so different now, I'm going to need to do things differently. I'm going to need to think differently and I'm going to need to just go down different avenues because of this, an opportunity popped up that I would never have considered before in my life. I went for it. I upgraded my license to a class two license, which was hard and terrifying and a huge learning curve and my brain hurt for weeks, but I did it because I knew it would be uncomfortable because it wasn't a comfort zone. I'm so glad that I did it because I ended up getting a job driving a school bus, which is something I never thought ever in my life that I would be doing. But it made perfect sense to me when it fell into my lap. I love driving. I've gone on many long road trips. Stories, if you're interested, I can tell them in the future, in a future video. I love kids. Kids are hilarious. Kids are so much fun. I actually like children better than I like the big people most of the time. They're hilarious. So yeah, so I drive a school bus now and it's awesome. I love it and it's not hard work. It's very rewarding and I take it very, very seriously because I mean, I'm transporting other people's little humans around. To me, that's, that's a huge um, purpose to have and I'm so glad I, I'm doing it. And if I hadn't changed my mindset and worked smarter, I don't think I would be in the position I am today. I'd probably still be plugging out resumes the way I was before, which, you know, what's the definition of insanity? Doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. Yeah, relearned. So that my friends leads me to my final point. Number five, doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results is the definition of insanity. So as I was saying before, when I was looking for work, I was using a tried and true method that always got me a job before. And it was never a problem because I had a great resume. All I would have to do is just send it out and I would get results. And then I could pick and choose what company I wanted to work for. Um, or I could, you know, go for a little bit more money or a little bit better benefits. So that was never a problem for me before. So I kept following that same path and doing the same thing over and over again. But in 2020, I wasn't getting the same results. So I started plugging harder at it. It started driving me crazy because I wasn't getting results, but I kept doing the same damn thing. I did this for, I think it was about three months with no results. And it took me trying something new or looking into something new or take actually was taking a suggestion of something that I would never have thought of doing that got me the result of actually get, gaining employment and getting back to work. And it was doing something differently. And I got a result. Who would have thought? And I don't feel so crazy anymore. So there you go. Number five, learned. Believe me, I know it's hard to break out of those ruts and try something that's outside of your comfort zone. And for me, this was terrifying, but that's when I realized that it's probably the right thing for me to do because my 2020 mantra was to get out of my comfort zones. And that opportunity to me was, was actually quite uncomfortable. Well, friends, welcome to 2021. Another trip around the sun successfully completed. Thank you yet again for joining me and I hope this inspired you or at least got you to start thinking a little bit about the things that you learned in 2020 that were positive things because there's always positive things if you go out there and you actually look for them because as I've said before, what you look for is what you see and it's so true. I guess that would be six things that I learned in 2020. If this uh, content has inspired you or made you think a little bit, please consider subscribing. This is the kind of stuff I do all the time. Just ramble on about things that I've learned that I hope to kind of push out into the world, maybe to make some, just one person's life a little bit better, um, other than my kids who are sick of listening to me talk. You surprised? I also would be interested if you guys would share in the comments below some of the things that you learned 
because to me that's that's fascinating to see the the good things that other people have experienced too. I really do read the comments and I enjoy um, hearing about other people's successes as well. So again, have a great day, drink your water, eat your vegetables, and I'll see you in the next one.